Welcome to the OLV Daily Reflection for Saturday, October 10th. Today's first reading for Mass comes to us from the third chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. It reads, Brothers and sisters, For through faith you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. All of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free person, there is not male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ and you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. As I've mentioned before in the Day of the Reflections, I served in the army as a chaplain. And the chaplain corps of the army had religious leaders from various religious faiths. And all of us served together to help and support the religious freedom of those who served in the army. Since most of the chaplains who served in the army were from Christian denominations, there's usually a lot of discussion among us Christians about the differences between our denominations. As a Catholic priest, I was always asked lots of questions about theology, our seven sacraments, and the many statements put out by the Pope and the various bishops. And I learned a tremendous amount from these conversations because I not only had to answer questions, but it gave me a chance to see another Christian's point of view. One time when we were gathering together as Christian chaplains, this very passage from the third chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Galatians was used as a scripture passage for meditation. And it was put forward that many of us chaplains know that differences exist between us but there is a tremendous amount of unity that comes because of our shared belief in Jesus Christ and it's important to understand the differences and we need to respect each other's beliefs but again St. Paul pointing to the unity that must exist among all Christians at that time in that community also points to us in this contemporary world that we need to be united around Jesus Christ, especially as we serve others. And that was especially true in the army. All of us chaplains needed to serve our soldiers and in turn make sure that we are serving our country to the fullest of our ability. Now outside the army, and as a pastor serving in various communities, there has been a tremendous amount of unity among Christian churches because of our common belief in Jesus Christ. I should note that different Christian churches do put forward a lot of differentiation because of their very beliefs. And this differentiation that happens could be perceived as competition among the Christian churches. But that reality aside, Christian churches come together to address a lot of problems and concerns in our communities, And furthermore, our belief in Jesus Christ calls us to action. And this is why many times churches cooperate around addressing problems. But even inside individual churches, a lot of the work that's done here at Our Lady of Victory doesn't help just Catholics. It helps the entire community. So whether Christian churches are coordinating together or each church is working to address problems they see in their community, There is this united belief in Christ that causes us to do many things in service of the kingdom and in service of our belief in Jesus. Now, there is a bigger question that still has to be addressed. And the question is this. Is the disunity among Christians still a problem even though we as Christians can work through it? Now, different Christian denominations would answer this question differently. From a Catholic perspective, this unity that exists among Christians is not a good thing. Paragraph 820 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church addresses the issue with these words. It says, Christ bestowed unity on his church from the beginning. This unity we believe subsists in the Catholic Church is something she can never lose, and we hope that it will continue to increase until the end of time. Christ always gives his church the gift of unity, but the church must always pray and work to maintain, reinforce, and perfect the unity that Christ wills for her. 
This is why Jesus himself prayed at the hour of his passion and does not cease praying to his Father for the unity of his disciples. Quote, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, and they also be one in us, so the world may know that you have sent me. Unquote. To desire to recover the unity of all Christians is a gift of Christ and a call of the Holy Spirit. As the Catechism makes clear, this call of Jesus Christ for all Christians to be united as one is what the Church teaches and works towards. But the Church also knows that we are far from that reality, but there are many blessings that still happen despite this disunity. Therefore, the Catechism of the Catholic Church also says the following in light of our current circumstances of disunity among Christian churches. It reads, Certain things are required in order to respond adequately to the call of unity for, among all Christians. 1. A permanent renewal of the Catholic Church and greater fidelity to her vocation. Such renewal is the driving force of the movement towards unity. 2. A conversion of heart as the faithful try to live holier lives according to the gospel. For it is the unfaithfulness of the members to Christ's gift which causes divisions. 3. Prayer in common, because the change of heart and holiness of life, along with public and private prayer for the unity of Christians, should be regarded as the soul of the whole ecumenical movement and merits the name spiritual ecumenism. 4. Fraternal knowledge of each other. 5. Ecumenical formation of the faithful and especially of priests. 6. Dialogue among theologians and meanings among Christians of different churches and communities. And seven, collaboration among Christians in various areas of service to mankind. Human service is the idiomatic phrase. So the Catechism points to all the things I talked about earlier in today's reflection. A lot of good things have come from unity among the Christian churches, even though we believe that this is not what Christ fully desired, but many good things come as a result of it. So St. Paul's vision in today's reading is right when he said, through faith you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. But what this means for the contemporary world is that we still have to work not only for unity, but also we have to work through the disunity to continue to serve Christ and bring forth good things for the kingdom. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.